Hello, everyone. Brainerd Carey here. I'm the director of Praxis Center, as all of you know who are here in the membership group. And if you're seeing this afterwards, you can still make comments here. Okay, today, everyone, I'm talking about developing artist workshops for income and also for travel. So you can travel more and, um, and build an income from it. It's not for everybody, but I'm going to outline the model of how to build a model and make this happen for you. Some of the things you see are, uh, this is the whole variety of, of things in this realm. You can take people on a, on a, on a trip to Italy and everybody uh, stays inside a, a villa in Tuscany and there's meals served and, and workshops and everybody paints outside, kind of plain air group. That's, that's one method. Um, I've seen people do it in New York City. We meet in Central Park. We meet in this park. We meet in that park. Um, and people pay to be part of the group. And you go around and instruct people a little bit on how to paint. You orient them on how to paint. And in, 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 in essence, you're teaching them your technique of how to paint. And, um, and it allows them to, to work. And they all pay you a fee for doing that. Sometimes there's um, more involved than others. Obviously, if you're doing it locally and you're, you're, you're developing different groups in different places, lunch doesn't necessarily have to be served. Uh, there aren't a lot of other expenses. If you're traveling, which is really nice, to another state, to another country, and you're looking at museums, there may be a number of things involved, like uh, buses and planes and, and, and tour guides and uh, museum docents, which is all doable. It's, it's, this, is, this isn't so difficult. But I'm going to explain how to, how to kind of plan yours out and get into it because it's really pretty simple. So for those of you who are interested, who are interested in this, the, the, the basic idea of this is to build an income for one, but also to enable yourself to travel and do something you like and, and teach people to, uh, to make art, help people with the paintings they're already doing or whatever the art that is that you're doing. Typically, in a lot of these workshops, it is for painters, right? You don't see a lot of these for sculptors. Um, you see a lot of plein air painting, people with easels outdoors. Uh, but you could definitely do one on life drawing and other types of things, but it, it tends to be figurative. You're helping and teaching people uh, with technique. So, okay, to do this, it's pretty simple. The way, it's the same way all entrepreneurs approach a new business. And, and it's, it's quite simple. What you do is you look for businesses like this that are already thriving and you copy them and, and, and change it to suit your needs. So in other words, you look up, um, travel, uh, you, you're Googling kind of, um, uh, plain air painters in Italy or, or plain air, you know, workshops in New York City, plain air workshops in Vermont, uh, whatever it is that you're thinking about. And what you'll, what you'll see is you'll begin to find and get into the network of other people who are doing this. And you'll see their website, you'll see their costs, you'll see how they lay it out. You'll see every bit of how a viewer navigates it. That's the whole system. That's the whole system articulated. You'll see some people are more successful than others, and those are the ones you want to emulate. And the ones that are successful are the ones who have done multiple trips before. And you know, I you know, I knew some artists that take people out to the Midwest and um, do a workshop out there, and they bring about forty or fifty people out every year. You know, accommodations and everything is 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 included. But again, the method for this is pretty simple. You look at one that you like, search for ones that you like, and then you duplicate that. And the way you duplicate it is you look at everything on their website. That's what your website should look like. You should have a website just like that. If you like the way their website looks and you can navigate it and it makes sense to you. And you'll see things on there like, okay, the trip to Italy, round trip with a chateau and teachers and a cooking class. I know someone now who's in... Um, who's in Italy, you know, they're, they're somewhere in Tuscany and they're all in a villa with, with a bunch of other artists. They're doing plein air painting. They also have cooking classes during the day and other activities built in. You know, let's, let's say you're, you want to set up a workshop like that and the package is $4,500. 
whatever it is, whatever they say it is. That means you can add it up $4,500 and there's so many participants gives you X amount of money because they'll say right in there in, in their website what the limit is. So you'll see what their budget is. And then there's, of course, flights, if they're included or not, uh, buses. And the way to organize all of that is simply calling a travel agent travel agent can you can you kind of be your own travel agent and do it even cheaper but a travel agent can also help you book a whole tour a villa in italy a bus to get there from the airport uh bus trips on certain days to certain cities seeing certain museums it can all be booked in advance and you don't have to pay for a travel agent to put together this package. In most cases, they put together the package for you and you say, okay, now I'm gonna to try to book it and get 50 people on. You get 50 people on, it's a go. So just to recap, and, and uh, now I'm gonna answer your questions if you have any. The way you create artist workshops for income and also for your travel, so you get paid money, is to look at other people who have done the same thing. It's what entrepreneurs do everywhere. Look at their websites carefully. Pick the most successful ones. And then you're essentially going to copy their website. You're going to redo what they've done. And I don't mean copy it exactly, you know, people have their own style and everything, but it's all the same method, you know. This is what's happening, and there's some beautiful pictures. This is how many days, this is what you'll get, and this is the price. Maybe there's a few different ways to pay it. Something like that, you'll see it all laid out on their website. Everyone else is doing this from other people's websites. They're looking at who's successful, and they're using that to build their own website. So do that. And the only, the only initial expense, which doesn't have to cost you anything, depending on um, how well you can build a website, you can get a Squarespace website for $8 a month, is to build a website based on someone else's website and on your idea. Even if it's a local plein air group and you want to meet people in parks and it's $50 a person and you're going to teach plein air painting on Sunday afternoons from 3 to 4, but you need a minimum registration of five people, that's fine. You build a website and then you promote it. And how do you promote it? You promote it again the same way those other people are promoting it. You have a website, of course, but then you promote that website with a little listing, you know, and, and, and posters. It could be a lot of things, but that, that articulated very clearly. This Sunday from 4 to 5, from 4 to 10, or whatever it is, not 4 to 10, but noon to, to 5 or 11 to 4, we're doing plein air workshop, uh, instructions included you know, and, and, and explain what it is. Promote it locally if that's what it is. Uh, international ones, you can either promote it through your mailing list or you can begin taking Facebook ads. But that's a little more, uh, then you start getting into an expense. I would begin by just trying to promote it locally with friends, with acquaintances, um, to get people involved. You know, local postings of people, of, of, of stores, of magazines, of blogs around you. But first, you have to build the idea in a, um, a website so it's clear what your offer is. And it, it could not work the first time. It could fail the first time. You could have a whole idea of going to Italy, and the packages are $1,500 each, not including airfare. And you've got the travel agent to put together the whole thing. You've got the chateau, the whole thing going. You built the website, and it was for, you needed 50 people to do it, and only 25 showed up. So you can't do it. You're not going to lose money. You're going to lose time. And, and there's your website. But now you know next time, well, you have 25 people. You need to put together another package that will work with 25 people. So, you know, trial and error would also help this a lot. So that's the talk today. And I want to hear, see um, who's here and answer your questions. Hey, Deborah, uh, great to have you here. Um, Yulia, uh, Michael. Uh, yeah, great to have you aboard, Michael. Clyde, great to see you, Clyde. So uh, Deborah says, I've had a workshop on the books of a tour company in Turkey for the last three years. The premise was to sketch on location at archaeological sites, then an exhibit, and then an exhibit in Istanbul. I really had no way of promoting it, and the company in Nazmir, Turkey, really couldn't entice their citizens to take a class from a foreigner. I'm not sure if it's a political situation or my lack of, lack of business acumen. I'm not sure either. Um, I don't think it's your, your, it could be the political situation, but um, 
But it could also mean that it wasn't just articulated clearly. You know, if they're afraid of a foreigner, then it would be good to say that there are going to be local people there helping or, 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 or that it's primarily about um, locals. And the company uh, who you are doing it for really should, it, it depends what their mere materials were for reaching out, you know, um, how they asked. Do they ask all their people once? Do they ask them twice or three times? There really needs to be multiple emails and you have to work with a company to, to read their copy. What did it say and, um, and how enticing was that? That's where the business acumen would come in. What do the invitations look like? How sexy does the whole thing sound? What are we going to see? You know? Um, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, uh, now that I have a newsletter, yeah, that might be the ticket. That's correct. Um, hi, Rhonda. Hey, Mimi. Great to see you here. Hey, Kate and Steve. Good to see you, Steve. Um, so, yeah, this is an exciting way for, for, for any of you to, to, to potentially build income in a business that could just be on the weekend or it could be in another country. But do something that also you're really into, you know, a country that you like, uh, a city that you like. I mean, you can even do tours, you know. I, I know a number of artists that are doing things like uh, graffiti tours of their city, right, just tours, right? So there's that. Um, or you can do one of, um, of, of other types of tours, even tours in, in museums or tours of galleries. In New York, I know artists and curators that put together groups. People pay $50 or more a piece just to uh, have a curator take them around to six or seven galleries in New York and learn about art. And what does that mean? I mean, an artist can do that too. You walk into the gallery and you talk to them a little bit about what's on display here. Gallerists love it. And people need to learn more about that. That's an easy, low-tech way. And again, this is something, you know, you build a following too. Like any business, it doesn't just take off right away. You decide what you want to do. You have a website. You have dates. You research it a little bit. You talk to the gallerists. Um, you say, I'm going to bring small groups in here. I'm giving tours. They love that, you know. Um, the gallerist sometimes gives a talk too. You can coordinate it so each gallerist gives a little talk. That's if you're in a bigger city where there's galleries. Um, but but, but that's another option. Uh, but it's definitely a nice way to make it, make an income. Um, let's see. Uh, great. Glad you got in, Daniel. Um, glad, glad you got here, Daniel, your first live event. Yeah, just to say, if, if uh, that always happens, the live event just pops up on the page. The event really announces it but the live event just pops up on the page. So at the time of the live event, just go to the page and start scrolling down a little bit. You can reload the page, but I try to come on really punctually right at one. So you should, you should see me pop up there. Some people are looking around other places, but just, just scroll down the page a little bit. Um, Deborah said, yeah, they were a very reputable company. Uh, I was at CAA in New York city. I took a tour with them. That's great. Yeah. Very reputable companies can be great. Uh, I'm just saying that even with very reputable companies, if they had a following and they were at CAA, uh, they should have enticed people to come there. So either it was the political situation, which seems like, uh, I, I really don't know, but that, 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 that it would seem uh, unusual that that would really knock out everybody. I would think it more likely has to do with the copy with the invitation because that's everything in, in in selling something like a tour package it's how is it written how does it sound does it sound really valuable is this an opportunity that i really have to jump at now is this so special so that's why in order to to understand what copy looks like what it reads like that sounds like that just look at um other people who have done the same look at websites and, and look at your copy and at yourself from the company ask them the letters they sent out and think to yourself does this sound kind of nice and exciting um so so let's see uh hey diana um nice to see you here so wherever you are whether it's hawaii or or anywhere else um these are possibilities that you could do depending on where you are this talk is, um, I'm, I'm uh, just wrapping it up now, but essentially this talk was about developing income through artist-led workshops. And that could be teaching people about plein air painting, that could be giving tours, that could be traveling, it could be in your hometown locally, or it could be in another state or another country. 
So if you guys have any other questions, ask me now. Otherwise, I'll get to them in this thread later. And as always, if any of you have anything you want uh, me to do a live talk on, please tell me. Please suggest a topic, and I'll get right into it. Um, there's no no problem with that at all. I'm, I'm happy to do that. So please make suggestions. I always love you guys making suggestions. And once again, I love the fact that you guys are, are all commenting and giving each other so much love in the group. That's really awesome because you see people that are having success and having a great time. And sometimes those very same people or others also struggling with um, other very negative people or conversations they've had. And and it's those moments where seeing all you guys support them is, is meaningful to me, but it's also enormously meaningful to the person who you're responding to. You probably know who I'm talking about in the group that you guys both gave a lot of comments to. It was, it was Misty. So thanks so much for that. Um, let's see. Um, Deborah, maybe more like a, a nobody. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Yulia, what avenues to recommend using for advertising the workshop? Okay, advertising the workshop. I would go with the cheapest ones initially, the cheapest possible ways. Um, and that means uh, local blogs, local you know, news blogs. Um, you can even do local news shows. Send them a small press release. Don't spend any money. Uh, listings, wherever you can find them, listings, and small flyers, you know, as, as, as old school as it is, a, a small 8x10 flyer with little tear sheets at the bottom for a phone number they can call for more information, not a website. Typing in a website is very difficult. A phone number to call. So, you know, a little flyer that says you want to travel to Italy or interested in plein air painting or would you like a tour of galleries or a tour of graffiti or a tour of, you know, volcanoes, whatever it is, um, you know, call me and I'll tell you when the next tour is. Something like that. That's an easy way to do it. Put the flyers everywhere. Make small flyers. Put them down in places. That's the cheapest way to do it. Running Facebook ads and other things is going to cost money and is um, is much more tricky to do. That would be when you're more advanced at it. That's what I would say. Hey, Fred. Hi. Nice to see you here. Um, uh, well, maybe. No, I don't, I don't think Deborah, because uh, Deborah did one and it that was um, a company was running for her. Was it um, because you were not well known? No, it doesn't take a famous person to do a workshop. No one's looking for a famous artist to do a workshop. They're just looking for a workshop and experience. You don't have to be well known. Um, most people that are doing workshops, they're there to learn something from a teacher. Well, we don't usually ask credentials of a teacher, like, you know, how well known are you or how skilled are you really? If we know the teacher has been painting for 10 years and they're an accomplished painter, that's enough to teach us more about our technique or, or how to paint. So it shouldn't have been that. I would look closely at the copy that the company wrote, um, Deborah, to see if any of that can be approved. And also how many emails did they send out? Was it one? Was it two? Was it three? You know, if it was just one, that's why. Um, if you need multiple emails and the copy has to be great. Um, and you'll see how to write that by looking at other websites that are successful. So, um, Michael, question. Um, okay. Yeah, Michael, I'll, I'll put that in here. But if it's templates, I'm not sure what the templates are for, which templates you mean. Uh, they're in the different courses. But um, if, you're, if you're looking for templates for something about galleries, go to the website, praxiscenterforaesthetics.com, Michael, and you'll see the different courses in there that you can go through. And there's templates in, in for some things in different courses, but that's where they are. Uh, not so much in this group. However, in this group, if you go to the top of the page, there's something that says index, and uh, it's always pinned to the top of this page. That index has a lot of videos and it has a lot of resources in there. But if it's templates relating to courses, then yes, go to the Praxis website and um, the, the courses are there and you can go through them and you'll see them in there. So, um, so thanks everyone. Great to have you here again. Uh, please, Diana, Mimi, everyone that's here, Yulia, Deborah, Fred, Michael, Daniel, Kate, Steve, uh, Clyde. Don't hesitate to um, 
to suggest topics, to suggest a live talk that you specifically would like to hear about. Just post it right here in this feed, and I'll get to it. I promise. So wishing you all a great day in your studio, uh, and um, and wonderful to have you guys here. Just just a, it's great to see everybody being so supportive of each other. Warms my heart, but more importantly, it means everything to the people that are being supported. So, um, and also, of course, the gift of support, right? It's nothing like like uh, giving a hug. You know, you kind of get a hug at the same time. It works both ways, always. So thanks, guys, and um, have a great day, wherever you are. And um, seeing this just before Mother's Day, have a happy Mother's Day, um, whatever that means to you in, in your world. And uh, I wish you well. Thank you so much.